Hi and welcome anyone tuning in and uh, yeah hope you're enjoying Sunday and not going to stir crazy during this time at the moment but um, today I want to just give your thoughts over again to one of these biblical characters who has spent a lot of time in isolation. I'm going back to look at Joseph and there is so much more in this story of Joseph but I'm just going to pick a few key points out today. You remember last time I spoke about Joseph being thrown into the pit and how he was stripped of the robe of many colours that he had and it was dipped in blood and so on. And that robe was a picture of authority. It was given to him by his father. So his father had shown authority, shown favour on Joseph. And my question to you, one of my questions to you today is, do you know that you carry the Father's favour and authority. Do you know that? It's one thing we can talk about it, we do, don't we? And we say, yes, but the Father has chosen you. He's picked you out, right like he did with Joseph. And I know there's issues around that, but there's something in the picture about the Father picking Joseph out. And um, I want you, do you know that, who you really are? You see, and Joseph, we know, was thrown into a pit. I spoke about it last time. But he was also later on thrown into a prison. Um, in Genesis 39, you can look it up yourself. Did have a good time, Joseph, in many ways. Sold into slavery, ends up in uh, Potiphar's house and thrown into a prison eventually as well. And when he was there, what was it through all this, through all the struggles that Joseph went through, the hatred by his brothers, all these things, what sustained him during his times of isolation? What sustained him, what got him through, and what changed things eventually? I want to suggest to you that what sustained him was that he had a vision, he had a dream. You see, you can go right back to the beginning of the story of Joseph, and I won't spend time on it now, but many of us know it, the story of Joseph's dream. And he knew that something special was on him. He knew that God had called him for a purpose. And so he had that dream, that vision, to see him through. We can th be thrown into a pit of hopelessness, of despair, of um, isolation, that slough of despond as Pilgrim's Progress calls it. And we can be in that place. And yet if we have a vision, if we have a dream to see us through, then we can get through this, whatever. And it keeps hope alive. I wanna ask you, have you got a dream? Have you got a vision that's gonna see you through this time? And uh, we're told that Jesus endured the cross for the hope set before him. Do you realise that that hope that he had, that he managed to go through the awful pain and humiliation of the cross, was the hope of seeing many sons and daughters come to glory? The church. He had a picture of the church, of you and me, that saw him through the cross. Do you realise that you helped Jesus endure the cross? because that was his vision and his dream. And God has a plan and a purpose for every one of us. What is your dream? What is your vision? What has God got for you? You see, we're in a time now where we can't focus on externals. The externals have been shut down. And, um, you know, there, there are people I hear talking about, you know, what is the church going to be like when this is all over, are things going to change and, and so on. And I think that's missing the point because the point is God has allowed the externals to be shut down so we can focus on him. I've been speaking to other um, church leaders that we're in relationship with. I've been listening to prophetic voices. And the message coming out is that we can miss this if we're not careful. It's not about um, what's going to happen in the future. God is saying, don't focus on that now. That There may be things to come later, but this is the time to develop our relationship with him and uh, to grow in our relationship with him and to deal with those things that get in the way. I saw a quote on Facebook um, just today, actually, where somebody had said that it's not the mountain, climbing the mountain, that's the problem. It's the stone that's in your shoe. And this is a time where we don't focus on the mountain, whatever's to come, whatever you can see ahead of you. Don't focus on that. Focus on that stone in your shoe. What is the issues that you need to deal with? And come before God on that. Joseph changed 
every environment that he came into because he knew God had called him. Your internal environment changes your external environment. Whatever is in you changes what is around you. And uh, I want you to have a vision, as I want to have a vision, for what your relationship with God is going to be like when this is all over. Um, I have a vision. There are things that God is working on in me. I hope he's working on things in you. Sometimes it's not easy. Who said it'd be easy? I think God did things for Joseph when he was in the pit in the prison that couldn't have happened any other way. Let's take this time to make the most of it. And every, as we uh, take bread and wine today as well, as I'm sure many of you will do in your homes, remember the baker and the butler as well. You know, the butler that they, Joseph met them both in prison. Remember the story? And uh, they had dreams too. And Joseph interpreted those dreams. The butler would have served wine to the king, to Pharaoh. And uh, the butler was released. He was saved. He got out of prison and he got back to his job and continued. There's a picture of the wine being a picture of the blood of Jesus shed for us so that we can be set free and we can live in freedom in salvation and the baker well the baker's story was totally different he lost his life his body was broken and here's a picture the baker the bread is a picture of jesus's body broken for us so that we can be whole and we can be whole so as you take bread and wine this morning do remember that as well that, um, and I want to say to you that have that vision for when we get out of this. You know, whatever this, this virus has caused, it won't have the last word. God has a vision that he's working towards. He has a vision and a dream for his church. He has a vision and a dream for you. What is his vision for you? Okay, he is causing you to grow as a son or a daughter in him. Your vision can start out quite small. Joseph started just running some errands for his father to his brothers. That's all it was, who hated him, actually. I want to ask you, who is it that God is sending you to when this is all over? What is he calling you to change? Have your vision. Have your dream, church. Let's have a dream. Let's deal with the issues and let's come back excited, powerful, ready to join together and really see God break out in this nation. Bless you.